Namaste guys. Welcome to this uh, malware analysis and reverse engineering lab. So, so far we have studied um, static analysis. So, we have uh, did some analysis on two malicious files and we have uh, answered some questions, right? So, whether uh, this uh, malicious file contains any uh, strings which is related to uh, I mean malware or um, whether it has any hashes so we did some searches on this hashes on virus total and uh, uh, Google as well so we have also found some strings which has been already encoded so we have studied base 64 encoding and uh, um, uh, also XR encoding so these are all the things we have studied and these are all the things which is actually a very basic thing uh, while starting a malware analysis. So this will come under uh, static analysis of a particular malware. The next uh, module is actually a P header uh, which is uh, very important in uh, malware analysis. Um, so I am going to present a class today on P header. Um, which will clearly explain you um, what is mean by portable executable file and what are all the uh, modules actually present uh, under this PE, uh, portable executable file. So what is mean by PE header, what are the sections, what are all the um, resources uh, we have to get into uh, while doing analysis. So everything I am going to explain you in this uh, in mean video so p header p header uh, this tells the os how to run the program so this is a main uh, part of actually the portable executable file so this tells the operating system how this program have to run so it tells the os where the pieces of the actual executable go should go into the memory of a particular system so this tells the os uh, and it indicates the os as where the actual pieces of the executables which is present in the program should go to the memory of a particular system. So the third thing, the third thing is it provides the operating system informations that are needed to run the particular malicious program. So it provides OS informations so that are needed to run the program. It contains all the informations that are necessary for the windows to execute that particular malicious programs so so this pe header portable executable header uh, this part is actually present in a malware file which contains uh, each and every nook and corner of the informations that are necessary for the windows operating system to execute that particular malicious file so without i could say like uh, without the pe header uh, the program just wouldn't able to run uh, in the um, operating system. So we can call it as actually it directs the OS. Actually the P header is actually directing the OS where to uh, it tells where to put the different section of the program in the memory of the particular system. So how large uh, that uh, section of the program should be. What are the section of the programs what actually the purpose of that uh, program uh, what are all the dynamic link libraries dlls to load while executing that uh, malicious file uh, what portions are the executable code and which are the uh, data has to be represented and what instruction uh, instruction to start at so at what instructions or where i have to start first in the particular uh, malicious program and also it tells whether the program is actually a graphical user interface program or a console program or even an xbox program itself so in this slide we have to uh, um, get a conclusion that p header without p header the program couldn't able to i mean couldn't run in a particular uh, operating system so the p header is actually directing the os um, uh, where the uh, uh, different section of the program should place in the memory 
of a particular operating systems and what are all the DLLs, supporting DLLs have to be loaded while executing this malicious program and uh, whether it will uh, tell whether it is actually a guy mode, should run in a guy mode or in a console mode or it should be in a Xbox program. So everything it will tell actually the PE header um, of a particular malicious file. So P header it is it is it, it can be considered as a container. Uh, we can tell like it contains all of the informations needed for the operating system to execute uh, the program. So we can call it as a container. It contains uh, uh, every informations that are needed for an operating system to execute the program. It consists of actually. So we can call it as a director also. So because it is actually directing the OS where the pieces of the executable go into the memory of a particular system where the malicious uh, uh, program is actually executing. So then the right hand side I am here uh, um, give you a snapshot of uh, uh, P header. Um, it, 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 it initially consists of a DOS MS, uh, MZ header. This is MZ is actually I said right. So it is a, uh, it is a ma magic number of any portable executable file. So this is for MZ header and followed by MZ header there is a DOS dub is there. Um, and below this, uh, below the DOS uh, stub we are having a PE file header. Um, and below that uh, PE file header we are having the optional header. And below the optional header, we are having the sec uh, section tables, what are all the section present in the particular uh, portable executable file. And below this uh, section table, we are having different section of the particular program. I will tell you um, what are all the things we have to concentrate on as a malware uh, research analyst, we have to concentrate on in the upcoming slide. So oh, while seeing this uh, P header structure, I mean, um, we couldn't concentrate each and every part of the PE file. So I'm going to tell as a malware analyst, you have to concentrate on, on uh, some important section of uh, the portable executable file. So the first thing is actually a file header. So consider this figure in the right hand side. So this will explain uh, uh, the file header of a particular malicious file. Say for example, uh, here in this snapshot, uh, they have taken an antivirus.exe as, as a malicious file, which is located in the C colon of the malware folder. So the first, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a section is actually called as a, a DOS stub, which is actually 160 bytes. This is what uh, we don't, we don't uh, need to much worry about this uh, uh, DOS stub and all. We will go to directly go to the file header. So the file header which consists of uh, 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 while expanding this um, tab we came to know that the timestamp of the particular malicious file when it has been created and uh, and also the location that can help us the, uh, to uh, as a malware uh, research analyst to determine when and where the malware was created and all. So uh, in the file header, it contains much more of the information of the OS users. Uh, it includes the location of the code and data areas and the pointers to various tables and stack sizes. So this part, this first part is actually called as a file header. You please make a note. Um, this file header, it records the timestamps and the location um, where the malware and when the malware has created and all. So the second uh, um, uh, thing we have to see in the portable executable file is optional header. Under P header, we can we, we can call it as an optional header. So this uh, inform uh, this will give the information on the executable uh, for the operating system, and also it tells the subsystem uh, uh, of the uh, malicious file where. Uh, where we, are, where we are actually doing the research. So this will tell us what kind of interface this executable needs, whether a graphical user interface, a program, or a driver program, or maybe a Xbox uh, gaming program. So in the right hand side of the uh, I mean uh, slide, uh, I have given a snapshot where the optional header is looks like. So it will come under the file header. So there is an optional header, uh, optional header is there. So it will it will it will tell you the subsystem whether it is uh, whether this uh, malicious file needs a guy program to run or a driver program or a Xbox pro uh, program to run. 
So this is the second thing you have to note it down. So first thing is actually file header. The second thing is actually optional header. So the third thing is actually portable executable sections. So this is a very vast thing. Uh, we have to concentrate more on this thing uh, on this uh, module um, where the malware research analyst is going to um, um, retrieve a number of data. I mean, uh, uh, indication of compromise. Um, uh, to 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 confirm the particular file is actually a malicious file so what are all the sections which is present in the pe header are dot code dot text dot data dot r data dot i data dot e data and dot rsrc so what is dot code dot code is actually an executable code it consists of the executable code uh, uh, execute executable executable code of a particular program dot text is also consists of the executable code of that particular program if you are considering a file that file should should uh, compulsorily it, it should has this dot code and a uh, dot text code because this can uh, this contains the executable code uh, with the help of this code only that program that malicious file is going to execute so and then the dot data this represents the program data so for for executing the code i, I am also in need of some uh, uh, data also so that data will be present this program data uh, will be present in the dot data and also in dot r data also so this this also consists of uh, program data and the next one is i data i data is nothing but import data or import table um, so and then uh, in, in, in the next slide I will explain you uh, about the import table and then uh, dot e data which, which, which is nothing but the export data or export table which is going to uh, tell you in the next slide and dot rsrc which is nothing but the resources. So while considering this uh, section characteristics uh, the main characteristics of a particular malicious file is uh, read it has a uh, write option it may has execute uh, option it has an initialized data it has uh, some uninitialized data also so only these sections that are marked as an executable can contains the code we all know that the sections that has been marked as an executable who are all the sections which has been marked as an executable codes are dot code and dot text so this sections should be read only and should not be writable uh, thing. So this uh, dot code and a dot text should be in the readable only option. Uh, it should not be in the writable options. So some packers, some malicious authors, they will often create a sections that is marked as a writable and executable. So if they are doing so like that, I mean the writable and executable. Uh, marked as a writable and executable so that they can place the unpacked code onto it um, in the memory of the particular uh, system so this uh, as a malware uh, research analyst you have to make a note whether this code and text is in a readable option or uh, whether it is in a writable or executable option so it should be in the readable option since it is actually a executable code if it is a legitimate file if it is a genuine file then that dot code and dot text should be mentioned as a uh, readable thing only so it should not be in the writable and executable thing so if it has been so if it has been so as a writable or executable then it may be a malicious file and the next thing is uh, uh, in PE section is the packers and sections. So this will give you about uh, what kind of uh, packers the malicious authors has been used for packing this particular malicious files and all. And also it will give the odd permission. As I said earlier, if it is write and execute, uh, if it has been mentioning the executable code as a write and execute, then it is called actually odd permissions. So you have to make a note in this slide that uh, we are having uh, different sections in uh, p header dot code dot text dot data dot r data dot i data dot e data and dot r as r c so these are all the datas uh, some of them are called uh, executable code some of them is called actually programmable data some of them is called import, import table exportable and resources so 
we have to mention this section should be uh, some section should be in the readable only uh, option some section should be in the writable uh, or some section should be in the executable option so that should be we have to note it down as a malware research analyst so if you, if the executable code is in uh, writable and executable uh, mode then we have to make a note that file may be a malicious file so everything i am going to show in a demo so don't worry about uh, how to extract the section of a particular malicious file and all you just listen what i am saying for uh, for each and every slide so that is very uh, very very important right the second uh, i i mean um, in the pe section itself uh, as i said earlier i am going to uh, tell what is mean by actually import table so import address uh, table it is actually the list of dynamic link libraries and the functions or we can call this functions as an application programming interface apis uh, from those libraries the program is going to actually call so this is actually a supporting files where the particular malicious file is in need from the operating system to execute the particular malicious file so if the malicious file want to execute it needs some apis it needs some functions it needs some supporting uh, dll files dynamic link library files from the operating system so that the program will run without any error and all so that that thing the program is going to call from the operating system so if the program is uh, say for example it is going to interact with the computer say for example it sends a data over the network or uh, even it is going to encrypt something in the particular uh, system if a program is going to execute so uh, if a program what what here we have been meaning here uh, meant is uh, the program is malicious program if it is going to interact with the computer say for example if it is going to send a data over the network say for example if it is even encrypting some data in the particular mali uh, in the system so it is probably going to do so by calling one of the libraries which is already present in the system as i said earlier so every action a particular malicious file is going to do then it needs the supporting library files it needs supporting functions it needs the supporting apis and all that supporting functions that malicious file is going to get from the system itself for getting that malicious file from the system they have to call one of the libraries one and every libraries from the system so the program will specify that library and the function in the import address tables now you you, you can you can you are getting uh, i mean clear appearance of the import address table now so what is import address table it consists of the information where the malicious program is going to run for that execution of the malicious program it needs some supporting files that supporting files is going to get from that particular system where it is going to run and this information is actually present in the import address table the program will specify the library and the functions in the import address table this means that by looking at the import address table we can see what functionality the malware has so we are going to do an analysis in the import address table of a particular malicious file and we are going to see what the functionality of the particular malware is going to do so continuing the import uh, address table import address table of a program on the left i am giving uh, i have given some example for here the import address table so in the left hand side i mean uh, here in the orange color it is called actually the import address table of a particular malicious file so it needs a kernel 32.dll for executing that uh, malicious file so this kernel the 32.dll will be fetched from the operating system i mean the particular system where the malicious file is going to execute so for that uh, for executing this malicious file it wants to load the functions called virtual allocation read file and write file say example this has to be get from the kernel 32 uh, dot dll file which is already present in our operating systems on the right hand side the kernel 32 in the memory with the different memory locations the functions are at actually so this is the dll file which is present in the operating system in the victim system where it consists of uh, 
uh, different functions it already loaded its functions the virtual allocation which is loaded in this particular uh, memory uh, uh, real time on time memory so this is read file this is a particular uh, functions which is already loaded in this thing and write file which is loaded in this things so everything is loaded in a i mean uh, memory already loaded in a memory in the operating operating systems with the help of this kernel 32.dll the loader will first replace the virtual allocation entry with its location in the import address table so it will locate say for example this 0 cross 1 2 3 4 5 uh, is its uh, uh, is the location of the virtual allocation uh, uh, function so it has to be loaded in the import address table of a uh, uh, malicious file so it has been loaded so it has been already there right virtual allocation is the function it needs for executing that particular malicious file and hence the memory of that uh, function has to be loaded in the uh, import table so it has been loaded so 0 cross 1 2 3 4 5 it has been loaded here 0 cross 6 7 8 9 0 for read file it has been loaded here 0 cross a b c d e for write file it has been loaded here in the import address table by seeing the particular functions say for example virtual allocation read file write file here so everything has been loaded from the operating system towards the import address table by seeing the functions which is present in the malicious file so this uh, the loader will first replace the virtual allocation entries with its location in the import address table then it does the same for the read and the write write file until all the functions have been replaced with their addresses in the memory so you have to note it note this point in the uh, in this particular slide this is very very important so it has been loaded all the functions have been uh, the the functions have been replaced all the functions have been replaced with their addresses in the uh, memory so at this point the program will know where to jump and when it wants to call those functions and all so finally it knows the program the malicious program will know where to jump jump uh, where to jump means where it has to uh, reach the uh, memory of the operating system and when it wants to call those functions and all while executing this malicious file so uh, the second thing i want to make it clear is in the import address table ordinals so apis don't need to specify it by the name in the import address table they can also specify it by the ordinal also so ordinal is nothing but just a numeric off offset to the functions within the D dll this means that when you look at an import address table you might see the functions specified by the number instead of a name here in this picture you can say right so before uh, in previous slide we are having uh, under kernel 32.dll the import address table it has the functions virtual allocation is there say for example read file is there write file is there for instead of that it has been represented with the ordinal number ordinal 0001 ordinal 0002 ordinal 003 so this means that when you look at the import address table you might see the functions specified by the number instead of the name so however the process still works the same the loader will determine what the memory address of the function is it will replace its uh, it in the program import address table so by seeing the os memory um, it knows uh, which memory allocation it has to replace in the import address table so by seeing the by mapping the ordinal number in the os memory so virtual allocation uh, virtual alloc is uh, actually the function which has been already loaded in the in this memory uh, position which is been mapped with the ordinal number of 001 and it has been uh, easily mapped with uh, mapped here in the import address table also so a common anti analysis trick by the packers and the malware authors is to only use the ordinal values in the import address table and not the functions name which i have said earlier in this slide so they have they have been using the mostly the malware uh, malicious authors will use the ordinal numbers so most of the tools can tell us what we are going to see in the uh, in the nearby demo uh, most of the tools can tell us what are what are all the ordinals name is and uh, what if they can't uh, we can find this uh, through a google search so every tool it will tell what the uh, what is actually the ordinal name is if it is a 0001 it is actually virtual alloc 
so and if if it couldn't if it couldn't that particular that tool couldn't tell the ordinal's name uh, corresponding to its number we can easily find this through a google search and all so and finally in the import address table uh, uh, the very important thing is application programming interface so it is also present in this import address table as i said earlier import address table consists of the supporting files uh where it has to be located where it has to find out uh in the particular location of the os which is actually the victim machine so it, it will find the every supporting files from the victim machine itself and it gets loaded say for example a dll file it get it, it should get loaded say for example it could uh, uh, it get uh, load the functions which is present in the os memory and finally it also get Uh, the APIs from the victim victim machine itself. So there are thousands of APIs out there, right? So you you do you do a research on API. API is actually a, a very good concept. Um, as a developer, we ha- we all should know what is mean by API and what are the uh, different APIs present in the operating system. So common APIs you should be familiar with, right? You have to familiar with the common API. As a malware uh, analyst, you have to com- you have to familiar with the common APIs. So these are all the com- uh, common uh, <coughs> I mean um, APIs I have shown here in the pictures uh, for memory operations. We are having three common APIs: virtual alloc, virtual protect, virtual free. And for uh, file operations, it is create file, read file, write file, delete file. If a malicious file, malicious program I am executing, if it drops any uh, folder in your program data, or if it, if it drops any file in your Windows System 32 folder, then it has to call this API create file. Then it has to do some uh, execution. If if it if if it does want to do some execution, then it has to call this API write file. so similarly if it wants to do uh, if you, if that a malicious file want to uh, put some entry in the uh, registries then ha- they have to call this uh, api reg create key reg if you, if it wants to delete some key then they have to call this api reg delete key so reg uh, similarly for reg get value reg set value x reg set key value so these are all the very common apis you have to look in look it into as a malware uh, research analyst and for network operations connect accept send receive listen interconnect internet connect internet read file internet write file get host by address get host by name so these are all very common apis uh, every malware analyst analyst should know some uh, mis uh, i mean apis are there load library get proc address is the debugger present is a very important thing uh, if this api is there in a particular malicious file in the p header then we came to know that that malicious author is using some anti analysis technique they are actually checking whether we have been debugging that malicious file or not uh, whether we have been analyzing that file or not he, uh, that ma- ma- malware author is actually checking so is the debugger is present or not so write process memory create remote thread everything is actually important so lot of malware that import uh, functions that never get called so say for example if a malicious file it is getting executed it consists of number of say for example it consists of number of apis uh, this is because it, it should looks like a legitimate file so <clears throat> and have been used to make the malware look more legitimate by having a large import address table so you should concentrate if this malicious file is actually having a number of apis number of import address table then uh, the malware author is uh, tried to make that file is actually a, a legitimate file so we have to make a note on that also so uh, so this are actually uh, been uh, uh, considering here for the import address table right so what are the things we have seen in the import address table is actually <coughs> uh basic thing import address table and uh, uh, an example for import address table and then uh, ordinals and then apis and finally resources um for a particular malicious file uh, resources 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 or anything the program needs to run uh, if a program want to run if a particular malicious file want to run it needs some resources so it is actually the raw data which is attached with that malicious program itself so that is actually the resources for example the icon we have uh, seen a hdfc statement.exe file 
that is actually uh, having the icon of a PDF, auto PDF. So that has been stored here in this resources uh, section of the uh, PE header. So icon, a resource actually, a image, is, it is actually a resources. As are any menus that uh, guy programs needs. If it if if that malicious uh, uh, file uh, it if it exhibits a uh, guy mode, then it has been stored in this resources. So ma a malware uses resources to store hidden executables. Uh, also, they drop or configuration files they use. So malware authors they use to hidden some executable files in the resources sections. Also, uh, they will drop or um, uh, the configuration files that have been used for uh, executing some more uh, um, some more actions to be performed. So say here in the right hand side I have said some on example. One of the ways that Rosan Haas was used in the social engineering attacks work is by discussing themselves as a, a documents. So it, it seems like a legitimate document. Say for example in social engineering attacks, say for example in a Facebook, it looks like a um a legitimate document that has been uh, uh, i mean covering themselves as a documents but within that document it has some executable scripts so in this malware in this trojan a small binigan um a document is often stored as a resources that document may be displaced to the users after the program is executed so this will trick the users to think everything is actually going good so maybe some benigan document is there along with the malicious script also there in this resources so malware author used this resources section to do this uh, this kind of thing so icons is there images is there menus is there for guy mode and hidden executables is there configuration file is there fake document is also there so also we can find different languages um, uh, programmers could specify a language associated with the specific uh, resources so that their program could be used for different languages and all. So languages of the resources tell the geographical region of the malware that has been created or not. So it has this timestamps and also the resource languages also. Here in the picture it has been shown that English United States, maybe the malware has been created at the United States. Maybe here it is Russian, maybe created in, uh, by a Russian malware author. So we will see a demo in the next section. Thank you.